It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning at this uh, spring open house of the YMCA Academy. What I'd like to do this morning for a few minutes is just to give you an overview of the way that the YMCA has a wraparound approach for youth. Then I'm going to ask Evan to give an actual example of what that looks like and feel like in the uh, life of a young person. But I'd like to start with a question to you. What do you think the most basic needs of a young person are? Just think about that for a moment. The most basic needs of a young person. When I ask that question, often what I hear is the need to belong, the need to be loved, the need to be accepted, the need to be nurtured. And somebody once wrote that the most important question in the mind, of a, in the mind and heart of a young person at any given point is, are you there for me? Well, this question was at the heart of Sir George Williams' mission in 1844. He founded the Young Men's Christian Association in England. And at the time, the intention was to put Christian principles into practice by developing healthy body, mind, and spirit. So right from the beginning, it was a very um, balanced approach to young people. A few decades later, a physician and YMCA volunteer in Springfield, Massachusetts, his name was Luther Gullock. He designed a logo up here, which is now world famous. You've probably all seen it. It's the YMCA triangle. And it says, spirit, mind, and body. What that triangle represents is a belief within the YMCA that every person deserves the opportunity to develop to the best of their ability, their whole self, spirit, mind, and body. Today in the YMCA of Greater Toronto, there are six basic outcomes related to working with youth. And these are um, outlined in our Healthy Adolescent Development Manual. And here they are. It says this. Young people know and appreciate their assets and gifts. Young people discover ideas, programs, and activities that fully engage their energy, skill, and passion for learning and health. Young people are involved in relationships with adults that are positive. Young people acquire the understanding and skills of peace and peacemaking as a viable alternative to societal violence. The YMCA implements a youth engagement strategy that will provide greater opportunities for young people to have voice, to influence on the creation, development, and implementation of programs. We call this social inclusion. And finally, that the YMCA is recognized as a leader in youth development and participates in national level policymaking and roundtable discussions which concern youth, their health and well-being, and young people in today's society. Now the YMCA of Greater Toronto was founded in 1853 and so for over the past 160 years many things have evolved and changed. One thing is the sole focus on Christian values which underpin the original mission and vision have now been broadened and made more inclusive and they're now expressed in our six YMCA values. Honesty, inclusiveness, health, responsibility, respect, and caring. These values underpin all that we do at the YMCA. But one thing has not changed, and that's the YMCA's belief that every young person deserves to be surrounded with support and encouragement to develop to the best of their ability their whole self. Now, there's an approach to development we use at our YMCA which is called the fourfold approach. And basically what this describes is a balanced approach to the development of each person. Their physical development, their educational development, their social development, and their spiritual development. So for instance, a young person coming to learn to swim in a pool. They're developing more than just their arms and legs. They're developing self-esteem, self-confidence, abilities to enjoy life, to be safe, so there's many dimensions of the person being developed at any given moment. And again, in our diversity and social uh, inclusion work, we call this intersecting dimension of diversity. And what it really means is that from all of our staff and our volunteers, anyone who works with youth, is that they need to de develop a relationship to get to know that young person, to get to know the whole person. Now we engage four tools for this, um, four tools that help us to promote this kind of approach. The first is called asset building, and what that really is, it's a strength-based approach to adolescent development. The second is harm reduction, and what that means is we're offering options, not judgments. The third is the social determinants of health, and we use that according to the World Health Organization, and they, they talk about health this way. Health is not just the absence of disease, 
but it's really a complete state of physical, mental, and social well-being. And we also use what we call the stage of change model. And what this does is it acknowledges the readiness for change with specific interventions and supports as needed. So we're, we're putting the person at the center of everything we do. We're listening to their needs, getting to know them, and developing uh, on that level. I want to give you an example. Um, the YMCA, one of the, one of the things we do is we offer childcare. We're the largest provider of childcare in Canada. And right from the very beginning that a young person, a baby or a toddler, enters the YMCA, there's a program called Playing to Learn. And in that program, the whole curriculum is scaffolded around that young person, that young child. So their interests, um, what they're ready to learn, uh, becomes the basis for the curriculum. And I would say that every aspect and every program of the YMCA is built that way. Um, another example is um, our Youth Leader Corps and Newcomer Leader Development. What they do is they build self-awareness and confidence around topics that are, that are brought up by the young people. So there's examples all over the place of how this looks. And I'd like to invite Evan Connor, uh, who works at the West End YMCA, to tell us about an example that he has developed working with young people at teen nights. Evan, come and tell us about a story. Thank you. So like Mike was saying, I am currently involved with YMCA teen nights, which is an opportunity that we give youth age 13 to 18 to come into the facility for three hours every Saturday night to get them out of the negative areas and into a positive environment such as the YMCA. Over my time of being involved with these teens, I've seen a lot of them grow from young teenagers into young adults in a successful way under the guidance of YMCA staff and volunteers. There's a particular, particular group that comes into our facility that when they initially came in, they were very secluded, very angry with the world. They felt as if everyone was always out to get them. Both myself and my colleagues at the Western YMCA have been able to work with them and create that relationship that Mike was discussing to ha let them feel as if they belong, like we want to help them, like we do care. It's been an unbelievable experience. These gentlemen come in thriving for basketball, so we've used basketball as a way to instill these YMCA values into their daily lives. They've learned that life, such as basketball, offers a variety of ups and downs throughout a game or throughout your day, but you're going to, have, going to have to continually overcome these obstacles to improve yourself or your basketball game. A lot of these young men are unable to afford memberships, so they have very limited access into our facility, which is why we've done our best to try to offer things such as teen nights, and we've even expanded into a Sunday night league to give them more opportunities to come in. These kids are very receptive and very welcoming of our help though, which was awesome for me when I personally had a group of them come and ask me for help with their resumes. Because like I said, they're unable to afford their memberships, so part-time employment is something that they direly needed. Together, we ha I helped them, we worked on their resumes, their cover letters, I even gave them referral letters, but then I never saw them for a while. The greatest moment for me was when I went and saw them at the local mall, I saw them working, and not only working, but smiling, happy. They had accomplished something, they were belonging, they were doing it. A lot of things that people had told them that they couldn't do, the YMCA opened up those doors, just starting with basketball, but ultimately to life. It's been a great opportunity for myself to work with this diverse group, and, for the YMCA, and with the YMCA to help enlighten these children on their potential, both now and going forward. I'm thrilled to be involved with the YMCA and excited for their new campaign aimed at improving the lives of the youth such as these because this is the best place for them to be. Thanks, Evan. Well, that's what wraparound approach to youth looks and feels like. And uh, the YMCA has hundreds and hundreds of staff and volunteers, thousands really, who are working every day with young people. Um, I have another story that I heard about uh, actually from the Academy. There was a young man came to the academy a number of years ago and um, his family did not have the resources to pay but what they did, they were able to come because of our Strong Kids campaign, was able to support them. And what this young man really needed was a supportive environment. He'd been bullied at school. And so he and his mom came to the school and in his first year, <coughs> uh, this young man, he really, he barely spoke. He had his hat low on his head all the time. They couldn't get him to take that hat off. His collar was always up. 
um, and he covered his eyes. He was really kind of hiding. But you know, in that first four years, it be, uh, in the first year of the four years he was here, um, he joined something. He joined an after-school music program. And what he and the staff and others de de uh, decided to, or they began to discover was that he had some real gifts. He was an artist. He was a, mu a musician. He was a songwriter. And you know, in that first year, he actually performed at the talent night and started to come out of himself and started to look up and started to smile. Um, he did artwork on the web. One of the teachers here helped him to develop that. And his artwork was actually uh, sent out internationally. He got feedback internationally on that work. And so as he began to grow and began to stand taller, by the third year, he entered the co-op program, which is one of the um, fantastic programs here that youth have a chance to, to be involved in. And as it turns out, <coughs> this young man was paired with one of our maintenance people here at the uh, Central YMCA. And um, turns out, this maintenance man was also a musician. And so these two were able to build a fantastic uh, relationship. And not only did this young man learn uh, um, support and to feel that um, real respect from this man, but he also learned how to, in turn, show responsibility, how to show up on time for work, how to develop a sense of respect for, for the center here and also for the people who were part of it. This young man had also dabbled in pot, and the staff here, using a harm reduction approach, didn't judge him or throw him out, but they worked with him to try and show him options of, of other ways to make choices. Well, the um, most beautiful moment of this whole story came at the end of the fourth year, when he came out on stage at the auditorium here, and he showed up in a suit, no hat, no collar down, standing tall, and he shared his music with the whole group. And his mom was there in the audience, and uh, there were many tears that night. You know, there are many, many examples of uh, this wraparound approach to the YMCA. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to leave you um, two websites. If you want to find out more about uh, YMCA working with youth, you can go to www.ymcagta.org slash youth. Or if you want to find out more about the Academy, go to www.ymcaacademy.org. Thank you very much.